Hey guys, Brett Allegra-Wood here, author of the 3 Plus 1 Plan and Chairman of YPC Group, where we help you to build a thriving property portfolio so you can live the lifestyle you've always dreamed of, but in such a way that you're not creating a second job or actually working yourself into an early grave. So what I wanted to do today was just, we've had, been running the webinars now for a while, and we've compiled a hundreds of questions that you guys have been asking. So I want to take those, and what I've done is I've, I've broken them down into a, you know, a number of really key questions that most of you guys are repeatedly asking. And, and what I've done is I want to present them to you so you get that level of education. I've always been you know, a, a massive, massive supporter of free education. And so that's what I want to do for you guys today is really give you, I guess, what most people out there are concerned about in the market now, about property investment, about strategies, about structures, about all sorts of things, the questions that you guys have been asking. So, you know, it's not now me telling you what you should be thinking, it's you guys actually feeding back. And I, and I love that about the social media and I love that about webinars. Um, so yeah, sit back, relax, and uh, let's get started. One of my favorite subjects, guys, is, is building people's portfolios. And you, know, um, you find as an estate agent, and, and when I first started out, I was an estate agent, and you know, you're selling one home to one person, and then you probably didn't see them again, and maybe they would come back and buy another one if they were gonna move or something. But realistically, you know, it was you put a lot of energy and a lot of uh, emotion into you know helping them get their perfect property. But the thing I love about what I do now is that I actually don't really get emotional about the property, and I don't actually have much emotion about the properties that we're selling. But what we do is we actually build people's portfolios. So this question is probably one of the ones that I, I most enjoy dealing with, and I most enjoy seeing the evolution over time happen. You know, we've got some of our clients. Um, our biggest client has 17 properties right now, you know, and, and they've been working with us for, uh, what is it, it's about six years now, you know, so um, it, we've got some, and we've got fairly sizable portfolios across there, and you know, we've got people with one property as well. But, the, you know, the building of the portfolio is, is really the thing that I'm most passionate about, because over those, you know, those 17 properties, I've seen that, you know, husband and wife change, you know, as people, and really, you know, change their fortunes, change the way about they view their pension, so, you know, one property is never enough anymore. You've got to build a portfolio. And so how do you do that? Well, you know, the question is, how do, you, how do I build my portfolio safely, okay? Now, I'm gonna deal with the building the portfolio first, and then I'll add the safety, safely on the end, because I think it's one of these things where um, it's, all, it's actually very easy to build a portfolio, okay? If you, you know, and I've seen people build up portfolios of 20, 30, 50 properties, um, but then they've lost them, okay? They haven't been able to hold them. So the question is not about necessarily um, how to build up the portfolio. That's a pretty easy thing to do. It's about how to build it up safely, okay? And we'll deal with the safely bit first. I wanna show you how to build it, then we'll come back and we'll talk about how to actually build it up. Okay, so it's a really simple process, okay? And with property, you know, there's not too much complexity about it. There is a lot of people involved and a lot of emotions and a lot of, um, you know, um, you know, various stakeholders if you like. And because of that, you've got to have really clear lines of communication, otherwise things fall over, okay, and things happen. And you know, for the most part, you know, one of the reasons why we work with teams of people that we've worked with for ages is because we know them, we communicate well with them, we know the jobs they do. And, and that's really essential. If you're gonna build a portfolio, a large portfolio, you wanna have a solicitor use, you wanna have a broker use, you wanna have a, a sourcing, you know, so you wanna have all these people that you know and you trust, okay? Rather than just trying to find people every, every time fresh. You know, and, and that's one of the key things to building a portfolio. But actually, that's probably talking about the safely bit of it. Anyway, how do you build it? Pretty simple. Depending on how much capital you've got, income you've got, um, let's say you can just start off and you build one, you can buy enough money to buy one property. Now, I always say, you know, if you look at the property here, okay, you'll see these little things drawn out, okay? Each one of these is a two year period because what I do, I break my portfolio building and my portfolio management down into two year blocks, okay? Two years is key because for me, two years is far enough out that you know, I can't just grab it and reach it, okay? But it's also not so far out that what's gonna happen is that I just you know, don't even think about it because there's a danger in putting something so far out that you just you know, go on to that or something else. So two years I find is a really good measure, and especially when you think about mortgages, you know, two year fixed mortgages and things like that, it's a really good time frame to build your property portfolio too. It also means that you know, if you're looking at it and coming back and reviewing every two years, then actually you're not gonna miss too much opportunity. The, the, the property cycle moves in very slow and predetermined 
you know, um, uh, cycles. And because of that, you can take advantage of those cycles. So let's have a look here. So we bought our first property. Not only have we bought it, we've cash flowed it for two years. Now, let's just say that for this particular property, we spent all our money. We haven't got any other spare equity. We put aside the cash flow in a provision account, so we're, we're, we're safely doing it. But the important thing is we've got that first property. Now, how are we gonna make it? Either we're gonna make money off the rent, so off the yield, that gives us, if we've got a high yield, that gives us money back in our pocket that we can put in back in the property later, you know, once it builds up. Or we've got income, we've got a high income, disposable income, we put that disposable income. Or the other way is that what we need to do is we need to wait for the property to go up in value. Now, there is another way, and the other way is that we sell this property, take the profit, and put it into the next one. The problem I see with that is property is a relatively illiquid asset, okay? And because of that, it actually costs 5% approximately, and this is a rule of thumb, 5% to get into a property, 5% to get out. So, you know, if you're gonna buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell, every single time you're gonna lose 5%, which really you don't have to, because what you can do is buy and remortgage. So as this property goes up in value, what we wanna do is go back to the mortgage company, whether it be the, the, the one we're with at the moment or a new one, whoever's got the best deal obviously, you know, and you can use a mortgage broker to find that out and take that money out. Now that we've got this equity from this one, we can then, and we've still kept this property, and this is the important thing, because we want to build a portfolio. If we sell that, we're back at square one, okay? And all we're doing is we're now that prices have gone up, we're buying into a market that's higher, and it's costing us 5% to get out and 5% to get back in. So it's a 10% net cost, if you like, all right? And we're still with one property, all right? So we use the equity from this one, and we roll that equity through a remortgage into this one. So we've now got two properties. But the important thing is, we need to cash flow this property for the next two years, as well as this one, all right? So now what we're doing is we're, you know, and assuming we've got no other money and there's not money from the rent coming in so we can't buy any, we wait around and then, it, look, it may not be two years, it may be 18 months, it may be, whenever you can get that equity and through using a portfolio manager, you're gonna find pretty quickly that actually you've got that equity, you can access it, let's go for it, okay? So here you've got the two properties, let's say they both go up in value. Now, in actual fact, this one's gone up. Let's say this time, this two year cycle, this one just sat around and did nothing. But this one went up. We take the money from that one and then we roll it into another one here, okay? And let's say this one did nothing again. You know, the area is you know, a bit shady or whatever, or it's getting regenerated. You know, this one goes up again, this one does nothing. Well then we take the equity from this one and you know, and we basically roll this into the next one. And let's say now, all these properties go up. This one we buy goes down, let's say. Roll it in that one. So the whole idea behind this is quite simply that we take the equity from this one to roll in this one, the equity from both those to roll in that one, the equity from those ones to roll in that one. And, and it's like, a, what do they call it, a snowball rolling down the mountain, all right? Now, the interesting thing is, as this goes, it gets quicker. So you'll find you'll get one. And then it may be two years or even three years before you can get another one, okay, safely, all right? Then it might be two years this time, safely. Then it might be 18 months, safely. Then it might be six months. You know, if the market takes off, you're gonna find that every six months you can go back to your finance company and give them a further advance. And as much as some of you might be saying there, but banks aren't lending and they're, you know, they're gonna subdue them, they won't, okay? The first chance they get to go free lending again, they'll do it, okay? I remember being in a conversation with, and I was about, it was in the 80s, the early 80s, and you know, I was probably 14 or 15, and I remember having a conversation with, and I don't even know the guy, I can't remember who it was, but I knew he was a multimillionaire. It was sort of, you know, I was looking at this guy going, wow, that's a you know, multimillionaire. And back then, that was a lot of money, multimillionaires. Um, and I remember him saying to me, you know, look, he remembered back the previous boom, and we were right into the middle of a uh, recession at that stage. And he said, you know, lending had, had subdued, and he said, basically, he remembers when lending was crap, you know, it come bad, and then it come good again, then it went bad, and that's what lending does. It subdues and goes out. So don't worry about the lending on that side right now. Okay, so in principle, that's all we're doing, okay? And working with a portfolio manager, and as you build your emotional intelligence, and as you get better at this and understand strategy, you're gonna know which properties you can remortgage, when you can remortgage them, how much you can take out safely, okay? So, and you're just rolling, okay? And eventually, now, that's how you build the portfolio up. Now, let's come to the safely bit, because I've sort of already alluded to a lot to it. If you wanna build this safely, okay, you've gotta make sure you've got these two year cash flow periods. So even if you're gonna buy these three properties, 
The fact is, you're gonna make sure you've got enough to cash flow these, okay? And we use things called mortgage cost, or uh, calculations called mortgage cost averaging, okay? It's basically, it's, I stole it from dollar cost averaging and turn it around, um, you know, so it's a, a term I made up. And, and effectively what that is, is I assume that, say in the UK, every time I do a mortgage, it's gonna cost me 6%. Now if I do that across my whole portfolio, then I can see, and, and I don't need to worry about fluctuations in the market, because the interest rates are gonna fluctuate up and down around that 6%. Now, right now we're very low, okay, which is great because what I should be doing is thinking that at 6% mortgage cost averaging, you know, 3.5%, let's say, pay rate. So this extra bit I can be putting aside so when interest rates do rise and they go above that 6%, I can then draw on that money. And what it means is I can safely grow my portfolio and it tells me a good speed to grow at. The problem with most people, and look, there's five gurus that are no longer out there, okay, and all of them had you know, 15 million, 80 properties, this and that, and all the hype and BS. And all of them had built up their portfolios, you know, over a very short period of time. And what they'd effectively done was they hadn't cash flowed this whole thing. They literally just bought and bought and bought and bought, and they figured that prices will continue to go up forever. They don't, they work in a cycle, yeah? So, you know, that's, and that continues to do that. And that's where you gotta be very careful about people saying they've got 15 million worth of property because half the time they haven't, and the other half of the time is that they've done it very quickly, and you know, that's a scary situation. You know, and certainly as interest rates rise, you'll find that a lot of those people go very silent, you know, including their companies may fall over, and they may disappear to Cyprus or Dubai or you know, any number of countries that I've heard these guys have to move to. Back to Australia, in fact, one of them. Um, you know, in fact, two of them have gone back to Australia. That's quite embarrassing, isn't it? Um, but yeah, it's all right. This, at this point, I hold up my British passport. <laughs> But um, so guys, you know, the whole thing with this is how to build this safely is all about cash flow, yeah? Look, a lack of capital to buy more property is just frustrating, yeah? A lack of cash flow to hold your portfolio, that's just plain dangerous, okay? That will send you off, you know, into a world of, you know, bankruptcy, repossession, all these sort of things very quickly, okay? a lot quicker than any frustration about not having the capital to buy this deal or that. So guys, you know, I think that's, you know, it's a really important lesson there. It's very easy to look at this and do this, and certainly right now, the market's pretty flat, but as the market picks up, you'll see how quickly this can come about. And if you understand this, you can use it to your advantage. Because these periods here may not end up being two years at some point, they may be six months, three months, because if you've got 10 properties, you know, you'll be really mortgaging one this month, that one next month, that one next month, and 10 months has gone by before you get back to that one and go, whoa, it's gone up again. So, you know, it, it steamrolls and it happens very quickly when it does happen. So that's why, you know, all of my investors right now, I'm saying, get in, get prepared, get ready for it. You know, even if you're just starting out, even if you've got no, no properties right now, get the first property, you know, because what that's gonna do is deal with a lot of the emotions. So when the market does take off, you're, you know, sitting in the, in the driver's seat. So guys, I'm sure you found that information really valuable. The first step really now is that you need to get a plan. You need to actually you know, work out exactly how you're gonna put this in place. So what I encourage you to do is come in and sit down with us, talk to us, you know, grab a coffee with us, and what we can do is we can actually start mapping out what your plan is. Guys, I'm looking forward to meeting you real soon at either one of our webinars or perhaps a seminar, or if you come to one of our offices around the world. Um, have a great day, and remember, live with passion. 